let's go back to the current setup and lower it to be the pressures here. I'll go down by 0 0.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, I want to go down another one or two clicks here because I saw that occasionally it goes a bit higher. Um, another thing I want to do, so here I'm going to go down by 5. And I would like to do something different. I would like to make the wheel rate stiffer and see if I control the aero balance of the car better with stiffer wheel rates, which actually are stiffer springs, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go two clicks up here, two clicks up here, and two clicks up here. Maybe it's too much. I would go just one and one. Okay. So I will, I will try this. Now probably I'm going to have some overs to here. Uh, because I've gone, I've gone two clicks here and one click here. So I will try to do a click on the bump stop rate. So what is this? Since we're waiting, you know, for the next session, free, uh, free session. So bump stops is exactly as you see them here in, in the little graph. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but you have a little telemetry uh, thingy here. Uh, so you have the suspension moving and you have a bump stop which is fixed, all right? So the suspension moves, this is the spring here, at some point the suspension touches the bump stop, bump stop is uh, usually made of rubber and it is elastic, so the elasticity, the stiffness of the elastic uh, rubber uh, is added on the stiffness of the spring. So when it touches, it starts compressing, you know, the bump stop and this adds stiffness. Why you need the bump stop? Because they are not linear. Uh, they are not even a fixed value as it was in Assetto Corsa 1. In Assetto Corsa Competizione, as in reality, they are uh, very variable and they are doing a hyperbolic curve like this. Okay? And the, the bump stop rate is how stiff they are. It's the force that they provoke at 10 millimeters compression. The, the number there is the force at 10 millimeters compression. We don't give the stiffness rate, but we give the, the force because the rate is not fixed as the springs. It's variable, okay? So the, the more you go in and compress the rubber, the, stiff, uh, the stiffer they, they become. Uh, so this is the rate, okay? So how stiff it is, it's the rate. How much force it creates, it's the rate. Um, no, you cannot tweak the bump stop rate down. Now, the bump stop range, as you can see here, if I change this, the red line moves up. Now, the distance between the yellow is your suspension, where your suspension stays. And the red is where your bump stop sta stays. The, the gap you see between the yellow and the red is the so-called suspension window. All right? Suspension window. We call it bump stop range. It would be better to call it bump stop window, but it goes too long in German, sorry German guys, it goes like something like, you know, long like that, it wouldn't enter the user interface, so we've called it bump stop rates. Anyway, um, so what that means? It means that uh, you can control how thick is your bump stop or where it's positioned, usually how thick it is, and you have some spring movement of the suspension before it hits the bump stop. On those cars, they are extremely pitch sensitive, LMP ones even more, you know, especially on cars that they don't have the third uh, spring solution, which is a different suspension geometry. You want practically the front suspension to practically ride over the bump stop all the time. All the cars, the real cars are made like this. They ride on the bump stops all the time, okay? So, um, so th this is this is what you want. So you want the the red. Whoops. Just a second. We have to switch um, the. Uh, oh, we're first. Yeah. Uh, we have to switch uh, the um, session here. Practice two. Practice two.
All right. So as I was saying, let's go back to the setup. We're still on the same. Um, you practically want the red line to be usually as close as possible to um, to the yellow line, which means that once you're out on the track, the suspension will instantly be and ride on the bobstone, and you have more stiffness. Uh, this is to to control, uh, you know, the the pitch of of the car. Um, Obviously, you say, yeah, but what happens when I'm turning? I don't want the bumps to because they make the car stif stiffer. So, you know, more stiff at the front means more, more understeer. Well, you have to find a compromise. And also remember that the pitch is controlled by both the bump stops because the whole car goes, you know, moves forward, uh, moves down the front one. So it's controlled by both the bumps. The roll, when you're in turn, controls only one of the bump stops. So it's, you know, uh, less stiff. It's softer. Um, so this is this is what uh, you got. So for in the question, very well, uh, Antelope replied. Uh, yes, whenever you change in uh, the right head, you don't have to change again the bump stops, because that's the whole point. We we worked behind the scenes. You don't see that, but it's pretty complex. Uh, the setup UI uh, user interface works to recreate all the values on the bump stops and the cambers and the, uh, the tow uh, to the same values that you had before changing, you know, the, um, the right head. So this is why, because in reality, you have the engineer looks at the telemetry data, looks at how the driver works, get the feedback and says to the mechanics, you know what, I want the front right head one millimeter lower. Uh, they tell this to the mechanics, it, it gives them the setup sheet uh, paper and um, uh, you, so the mechanics know that they have to keep the whole car as it is. They will, they will not go there and you know, lower the car and leave everything as it is. No, they will lower the car or raise the car and then they will rework all the alignment all the bump stop uh, differences, everything has to be as before because the engineer just asked for a, red, a right height change, not for everything. So everything has to be as before. This is what the setup user interface does in, in a set of course of compensation. It's pretty complex. Fernando Barbarossa had, you know, head edge for, for days and days to make it work, but he managed it. Um, all right, so yeah, try to, to keep that um, as, as close as possible to the, the red one to the yellow one. There are some cars that can do without that, uh, like, for example, the Mercedes. The Mercedes has tons and tons of anti-dive in suspension geometry. The first time I saw the suspension geometry, I was like, no, there, there is a typo here. You cannot have, you know, the uh, uh, suspension arms inclined like, like this. It doesn't make sense. So I had to double check, talk with the, with the guys, double check the data, and it is like that. So they make it work. I don't know how, but it works. So it's more unique than, than, everything, than anything else. Uh, and yeah, in the Mercedes, you don't have to uh, have the bump stop rate so close. You can, you know, live with two, three, or four, something like that. But all the other cars, you know, as close as possible. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So, okay. Uh, let's, as I said, we have the, the um, spring stiffer, stiffer anti-roll bars, a little bit less here. Uh, we go back and get our tire set number one and let's see how it is and then we're going to switch tire set and see how it reacts because we are in the second uh, practice session and we can use another tire set. Remember, you have like five tire set for the whole weekend. So race, you know, you have to do at least one pit stop in this race. So you need at least two fresh or semi-fresh tires. You need two fresh or semi-fresh tires for, for the qualifying, you know. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. It keeps you focused, keeps you understanding what you do. Okay, let's go back and uh, drive. Green light. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, okay, get go. Go, go, go. Pit stop, limiter, and let's go. Let's go. Break, 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 break. <laughs> so, car stiffer. Normally means that 
my uh, Arero platform would be more stable. In, so especially in high speed turns I should get a more, uh, maybe not to my liking, um, handling, but the handling will be, you know, this is it and it won't change, won't wobble too much. Decent. What did we do? We did a, we did a 27 low, something like this, uh, 57. So let's try to do something better. Yeah, the car looks good. Uh, looks pretty good here. Stable. A little bit stiff. I can feel it also on the feedback that gives a little bit more harsh, you know, reactions. But let's see. Yeah, I have to be a little bit faster here. Good traction. Tiny bit of oversteer and time free. Oh, oh, that was oversteer here. But I did downshift inside the turn, so let's keep that in mind and see how it's going on. some uh, sand over there, tricky and dangerous. Oh, Nils is here. Hi, Nils. How you doing, mate? Great guy. For the hardware, for the physics, mate. Really, really good guy. Not very good over there. Oh, 57.4, which means we are a little bit slower. I think we did a 56 high. Let's see if we can do something about it. So good here. Ah. A little bit higher pressures everywhere. Uh, went way too fast here, but still the car, you know, manages. I'm, I'm driving badly, but the car manages. It's not bad. Remember, I have the uh, already pretty worn down tires. 
from the last practice session. I'll do uh, another lap, hopefully a better one, let's see where we are. I could use a tiny bit more front-end grip at some situations uh, way too late you know what I'm gonna try a little bit of more rear brake bias at the end so Let's see if this is the knob. 57%. Yeah, uh, seems to work. Yeah. You see, again, we were like 57.6. Now we're at 57%. Small, small changes at a time. Don't overdo it. Lap time seems similar. stupid things. No, okay. much curve there, have to use less and you can see already the delta that's going down bad for uh, very worn out tires. We're gaining also some time here. Yeah. As you can see I can gain about three tenths of a second four. Probably if I drive better I can gain a little bit more. So I'll just go in the pitch round and see what our next move is going to be. 